have been discussing the magnetic uh, interaction between uh, <coughs> uh, electrons uh, in a solid for example, and uh, what we have uh, shown is that uh, the way to go about uh, is that you have to write uh, a joint wave function and that wave function then you have to with that wave function you have to calculate the Coulomb matrix element, the Hamiltonian matrix element or in which there is a Coulomb interaction as well uh, and that uh, matrix element uh, is different for singlet and a triplet configuration because your uh, wave function has to be anti-symmetrized. So, that anti-symmetrization can be done in two ways one is the symmetric wave function another is the anti-symmetric wave function and these uh, uh, these are basically their spin states are correspondingly singlet and triplet and these states uh, when you take a uh, when you calculate the uh, energy difference between the singlet and the triplet in such a state uh, uh, such states then you will find that it is non-zero and that means the uh, uh, Although Coulomb interaction does not care about uh, the, the moments, uh, the anti symmetrization brings in a spin dependent uh, term in, in the uh, energies, and that means the triplet where the two spins are either up or down, that means they are parallel, uh, is di different, the energy of that is different from the energy where the uh, two spins are anti parallel. So, <coughs> that is a, it's a really remarkable result coming out of quantum mechanics uh, and uh, what uh, we will do is now using that try to write down a Hamiltonian uh, which describes these spin spin interaction. So, we will not bother about charges because these are mostly magnetic insulators uh, <coughs> not iron cobalt nickel, but many of these uh, materials are uh, magnetic insulators and their moments are basically sitting tightly in their uh, with their atoms uh, and uh, therefore, uh, charge degree of freedom movement of charge is already quenched. So, the only degree of freedom left is their spins and we know that they are magnetically ordered and so therefore, uh, we know that the spins are talking to each other and uh, so, the dominant uh, part of the Hamiltonian. Uh, for in these cases is coming from the magnetic interaction and uh, and that is the interesting part because we want to uh, also find out the magnetic state of the system. So, that is the Hamiltonian that we are going to write. So, it is a spin Hamiltonian where charge degrees are we are not even bothered about <coughs> and in insulator of course, the charge degree of freedom is uh, mostly irrelevant uh, for the description of dynamics or the low lying excitations of a system. <coughs> so, let us uh, go ahead and uh, write this formula E s plus. Uh, so, the claim is that we can write a Hamiltonian uh, which is put a hat Hamiltonian operator in terms of this, these uh, differences in uh, uh, energies E s plus 3 E t uh, minus E s minus E t S 1 dot S 2. So, S 1 and S 2 are these two spins we are we are discussing of the two electrons. <coughs> okay. So, so let us put the the E S the value S 1 dot S 2 in the two cases. So, so for S 1 dot S 2 equal to minus 3 by 4 which is singlet total S 0 uh, this uh, let us calculate it. Uh, so, H will be H will give me uh, 1 fourth E S plus 3 E T minus uh, plus 3 fourth E s minus E t. So, this is uh, 1 fourth plus 3 fourth is uh, 1 E s and uh, 
this is 3 fourth minus 3 fourth is 0. So, this is E s. So, that is uh, so for singlet uh, total spin s equal to 0, it is giving me the correct uh, energy which is E s. Okay. Similarly, you do it for um, uh, h for triplet uh, equal to uh, that is uh, one fourth. So, one fourth E s plus 3 E t uh, minus one fourth uh, E s minus E t. So, this is s equal to 1. and just you can immediately see that this gives me back E t. So, this Hamiltonian uh, the way it is written is correctly reproducing the two cases for s equal to 0 it is giving me E s for s equal to 1 it is giving me E t. So, this is a right form of the Hamiltonian. Uh, now, the first term is of course, you in, a, in, a, in any Hamiltonian if there is a constant energy there is no operator here there is no spin operators in the first term these are just cons two con just sum of two constants E s and E t just numbers. So, you can just absorb it into your 0 of energy you can set your uh, 0 there. Uh, so, other there are other constant terms in there lots of other energies that uh, come in the system. So, all that constant energies can always be uh, a, a sort of absorbed in those. So, <coughs> second term is the one which is which carries an operator product of two operators S 1 and S 2 uh, <coughs> and that uh, contains this E s minus E t. And now, E s minus E t by 2 is generally referred to as uh, j and it is called the exchange constant. This is the magnitude of the exchange interaction just divide by 2 and uh, so that uh, gives me a. So, that is that I can write a spin dependent term uh, part of the Hamiltonian which is what I am interested in uh, which is h spin equal to minus 2 j s 1 dot s 2 given that j is uh, E s minus E t by 2. So, then uh, you can see immediately that if j if j equal to j greater than 0 uh, which means E s is greater than E t. Uh, then uh, <coughs> Uh, s equal to then uh, the two spins will try to align because there is a minus sign outside j is greater than 0. So, if the two spins align in the same direction the energy will be lower. So, you will get the triplet. So, this this will lead to a triplet state immediately. On the other hand if j is uh, if j is negative then this term becomes now positive uh, and then S 1 and S 2 then will try to misalign they will just uh, be anti parallel uh, so that this becomes negative. So, you will uh, get a single. So, here uh, you have E s less than E t and therefore, E s is the s is the state where it will go singlet because that is the lower energy and that is exactly what we are finding. So, that uh, tells us that this Hamiltonian actually re represents the correct physical picture when uh, spin spin interactions are concerned. So, this is the spin Hamiltonian, this is the one that uh, we should be uh, using to understand uh, everything that happens uh, in the uh, for the magnetic state of the system. <coughs> so, so, that is uh, that is exactly what is saying this uh, uh, this this is this is the spin Hamiltonian. You can uh, go uh, to many many much larger systems. Uh, for two electrons, it's very simple. Uh, generally, in a many body system, of course, it's much more complicated. Uh, but still, 
one has to one one uses this because this is uh, this is motivated by very simple calculations and simple arguments and uh, in many cases it actually works and so what uh, uh, one writes for a multi electron for for the many body system is still a, a hamiltonian of this type where you uh, use this uh, s1 dot s2 now is s1 dot s2 s1 dot s3 s2 dot s3 s2 dot s4 s1 dot s4 and all com possible uh, pairwise interaction between spins <coughs> so that is the that is the interesting part that one is not considering multi spin interaction s1 s2 s3 s1 s2 s5 and so on and so forth so those are not being considered so a simple model was written down by heisenberg which is uh, this famous model called Heisenberg model J i j s i dot s j, where i and j are the uh, side indices or the spins uh, where basically the spins at this i th side and j th side. So, the and their interaction between them is j i j. <coughs> So, remember that this uh, j i j is still arbitrary we have to determine it uh, from system to system. Uh, for example, in a in a for example, if we know the system is ferromagnetic then we know that all these uh, uh, j's uh, are greater than 0, because uh, then uh, then you have all spins uh, all s i's and s j's uh, are aligned in, in, in the same direction to minimize the energy. So, that would be their preferred uh, directions. <coughs> Uh, whereas, uh, th if they are uh, this is uh, negative, then of course, the situation can be complicated, because uh, spin 1 uh, interacts with 2, then spin 1 also interacts with 3 and uh, in that case for example, spin 1 would like 2 and 3 both to be anti parallel with itself, whereas spin 2 and 3 will also want to be anti parallel with itself, because of this if j i j's are all negative. So, that is that brings in uh, uh, complications in the system. Ferromagnetism is uh, therefore, much easier to understand. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the, the, uh, s uh, there is a simpler version of uh, uh, this, uh, this, um, in, in this Hamiltonian, where uh, one assumes that the, the moments of, of a particular site of any site, the moment is talking only to its nearest neighbors the interaction with the next nearest neighbor is much weaker, because the overlap of the wave function uh, and the matrix element requires you to calculate the, the wave function at this side, matrix element uh, the Hamiltonian uh, with the uh, wave function at the other side. So, <coughs> that is much weaker uh, if you go beyond the first neighbor, your nearest neighbor. So, in that case one is uh, one writes a Hamiltonian, which is uh, called the nearest neighbor Heisenberg Hamiltonian and that is the one which is mostly used j i j s i dot s j. This, uh, uh, this sign at the summation index uh, refers to the fact that you are only calculate ca considering uh, j i j uh, equal to j i j uh, non zero for i j uh, nearest neighbor and 0 uh, for any other. Okay. So, that is uh, called the nearest neighbor Heisenberg model, that is the most uh, common model that uh, one uh, studies. Now, the thing is that if you remember, if you just look at just for, for uh, 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 the sake of bookkeeping, one has to remember that uh, the way I have written here is i and j are unrestricted summation. So, uh, i can take 1, j can also take 1 at some point. So, uh, <coughs> of course, the, the interaction between spins at the same side is basically you do not consider that that is not uh, there is only one uh, moment sitting at uh, each side. So, i equal to j is uh, not the interesting part, but i and j are take all values right so i equal to j is basically zero so you don't bother about that but uh, i not here i is uh, i can take a value which j can also take at some point for example the bond 
the j i j's are defined on a bond right because it is i j 1 2 2 3 3 4 and so on so this is a this is between a, in the between the two spins which means there is a bond so that bond is counted twice here because 1 2 and 2 1 will both be counted if i sum uh, unrestricted uh, sum of j i j <coughs> so that can be prevented uh, by uh, a method uh, in which you just uh, keep i greater than j for example. <coughs> so, in that case you will have twice uh, uh, the, the <coughs> factor, because uh, here you had uh, uh, each bond counted twice. So, here uh, you are counting once. So, that is the factor of 2. So, that is uh, but, uh, but these are just bookkeeping one as long as you know what you are doing. Uh, you do not have to bother the this convention the second convention is not uh, very common and uh, the first one is the one one writes. So, the nearest neighbor as uh, as said uh, often it is possible to take j i j to be equal to a constant j. So, you can actually replace this by a constant and uh, only then take j out and s i dot s j and then consider only also consider only the nearest neighbors. So, i j. <coughs> so, this is how you write. Uh, so, s j minus j s i dot s j i and i j are nearest neighbors and j is a fixed constant between any two uh, bonds. So, the j's are basically suppose these are your sides where spins are sitting and j's are then defined uh, over the bonds. So, j i j j 1 2 for example, will be this uh, between this is we can write it this way these are the j 1 2's and all these are taken to be the same for uh, in this model. There are models where these j i j s uh, differ between bonds they can be random they can be plus or minus and so on and so forth, but uh, for uh, the standard models of ferromagnetism, antiferromagnetism, these values of j are fixed between nearest neighbor and beyond nearest neighbor you do not consider the interaction. <coughs> j i j is considered to be 0. So, that is the simplest model one can study, but certainly it is an approximation, but it works fairly well for uh, most systems that we study. Okay, so, this, this exchange can of course, be of various types some are discussed here in books you will find that there are many exchanges uh, that are discussed direct exchange, indirect exchange, super exchange, itinerant exchange and so on and so forth. So, let me just outline a few uh, <coughs> this is uh, A is for example, a direct exchange where the two spins are sitting next to each other and they are talking to each other their wave functions can overlap and the matrix element of h between them uh, is what you calculate for exchange. So, this is called the direct exchange, but it can also happen that there is a non magnetic uh, ion uh, uh, sitting in between the two spins. So, in that case uh, these elect these moments talk to the next moment uh, via this non magnetic ion. Okay. So, the these uh, the magnetic ions do not overlap uh, their wave functions do not overlap whereas, uh, the ma non magnetic ion is with which it o they overlap and via this non magnetic ion they can interact with each other that is an indirect exchange <coughs> it is also called super exchange. Uh, so, th there is another kind of um, uh, uh, interaction which is mediated by the intervening uh, uh, interactions with the conduction electrons. So, this moment for example, uh, is far from this moment fairly away from this next moment uh, which is again fairly away from this moment, but this moment talks to the conduction electrons nearby polarizes them and that polarization can carry the information of the magnetic history of this ion uh, to the next one and then that, then that sets up uh, an effective interaction magnetic interaction between this ion and that ion. So, that is uh, 
uh, that is another uh, 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 indirect exchange in which uh, the <coughs> uh, the conduction electron plays a role. Uh, so, the mag here the magnetic ions are separated they are deep lying states with uh, magnetic uh, moments and there is a conduction band above it. They, these deep lying uh, moments for example, 4 f moments in uh, rare earths they talk to the uh, magnetic uh, to the to the conduction electrons uh, and the interact with uh, the conduction electrons polarizes them the conduction electron that polarization then goes to the next uh, deep lying moment uh, and then passes on the history on that information to the next uh, ion and that set that can set up uh, uh, an interaction between these two so this is fairly indirect mediated by conduction electrons which are different uh, and uh, but uh, this happens and this is found out this is a very famous uh, example and as uh, i we discussed in gmr for example this is used uh, to to uh, to set up this magnetic interaction between the layers so this direct exchange is uh, something that we have actually done uh, when we did this uh, hydrogen molecule theory remember we calculated the uh, the two states which were uh, bonding and anti bonding so <coughs> look at the the uh, situation there remember that when two protons uh, with their electrons hydrogen atoms came close and uh, they basically started talking to each other now this uh, talking at that point we did not bother about the magnetic part of it but i just mentioned passingly that the state that it goes to uh, has no spin it is a singlet state. So, that is an interesting observation and that uh, we I postponed uh, that discussion till here because now we are doing magnetism and now you see what is happening these two spins of the two the two electrons which are far apart initially they were independent they could point in any direction which is like a paramagnet. But when they came uh, close by uh, <coughs> they started talking to each other and they form these uh, two levels which are bonding and anti bonding and we have to put two electrons and we can do it and we will do it in such a way that uh, we have already done that we put uh, two electrons at the lower and uh, lower bonding orbital to gain the energy and that energy gain gives us a magnetic state uh, which is already which gets fixed the magnetic state is a singlet because you are putting two electrons in the same bonding orbital. So, that uh, you have to be a, in a singlet state by Pauli principle the spins have to be up and down. So, the <coughs> uh, so that means that uh, in, in hydrogen molecule for example, where we discuss two electron uh, problem we actually have a magnetic order which is uh, it is not a magnetic order but the magnetic state is fixed. Uh, so, the, <coughs> the state is a singlet one spin up the other has to be down. Uh, of course, in helium as we uh, as you remember we could not do it we do not do this uh, because helium will also have this uh, other two electrons we have to put in no energy is gained there. So, it does not form that molecule, but that is a different matter, but this is a direct exchange example of a direct exchange between uh, when a hydrogen molecule forms or when two hydrogen atoms come very close to each other they are spins lock into a singlet state which is magnetic in the sense it is a singlet magnetic state it does not have access to the triplet state. So, if you measure spin you will find 0 moment is 0. So, in ionic solids for example, the super exchange that I just described via a uh, intervening uh, non magnetic ion uh, you can have uh, uh, although the two moments wave functions two electrons wave functions do not overlap uh, they can interact via a non magnetic ion sitting in between that non magnetic magnetic ion in most cases in many cases is an oxygen oxygen O 2 minus which has a completely filled shell. So, that becomes non magnetic and uh, this is an example for example, uh, in M n O see the O 2 minus uh, uh, are these uh, dark uh, uh, circles and two M n's are fair far uh, quite uh, I mean they are not near next to each other, 
there is an oxygen atom between any two m n in, in this m n o, but this m n and that m n actually talk to each other and uh, that is via this uh, oxygen and that is called the called a super exchange uh, and uh, that comes from the uh, from kinetic energy uh, that one gains by delocalizing uh, which is again the heisenberg uncertainty also tells us the same thing that if you delocalize you gain energy your electrons have uh, kinetic energy now so here is a simple way of showing it uh, more or less a cartoon way of showing it uh, this is uh, an antiferromagnetic arrangement and this is a ferromagnetic arrangement and you can uh, w work it out yourself it's all written on the left what you have to do you have to, you have to see that you see that the a is a, is the is a configuration that you have chosen where the interaction is antiferromagnetic so this electron in manganese and this electron in the next manganese uh, are antiferromagnetically coupled and there is an oxygen with uh, the states is completely filled up so, there is this is completely filled, two electrons are already there, it is non magnetic. In this case, you can go to the excited states uh, quite easily, uh, you can do it yourself, you can see clearly that you can exchange uh, this, uh, uh, you can move this electron here uh, and this, uh, this electron, the right electron here, and you can um, uh, go, go to a uh, <coughs> For example, what has been done here is this down electron from here has been moved here in B. Uh, <coughs> so, we are left with an up electron, then you can move the down electron from here and up down here and none here, nothing here. So, in effect what you have done is you transferred an electron from right which is down spin to extreme left, right. In effect that is what has happened. That means, you this electron on the right got gained a kinetic energy. Similar things can be done in C, where you can actually delocalize the oxygens uh, to uh, <coughs> two electrons onto the near neighboring manganese sites. So, there is a lot of delocalization energy that you gain here. Uh, the electrons can move and then that is called delocalization and that uh, gives you uh, energy. Whereas, uh, this D state, which is the same uh, configuration, but we have now they have now put ferromagnetical uh, uh, interaction between this, they are assuming a ferromagnetic interaction between uh, this manganese and this ma manganese and in this ferromagnetic configuration uh, you can easily work out, you can I, I leave it to you to do it. Uh, you can see that uh, this E and F states which are the delocal, where you can delocalize, uh, you are, they are not uh, accessible to it, cannot do it the ground state D cannot mix with excited configurations like E and F, because these configurations are prevented by Pauli principle. Okay. So, you cannot go from D to E or F, that is what is called mixing, I mean the quantum mechanics you, you get uh, you mix states, the overlap is uh, non-zero between these two states. So, that is a, an example uh, where the antiferromagnetic uh, arrangement will be favored than the ferromagnetic arrangement of the manganese spins. So, this spin and this spin being ferromagnet is a bad choice, this being antiferromagnet uh, is a better much better choice, where you electrons can delocalize and gain a lot of energy. So, that is what uh, one uh, <coughs> that is the super exchange mechanism, uh, it is uh, it leads to uh, antiferromagnetism in this kind of a configuration, where uh, an oxygen atom is uh, on both sides of it, uh, the uh, a manganese uh, spin of manganese for example, uh, is sitting and uh, of course, this is uh, and this is a straight line arrangement. Uh, if, if there are different arrangements where this the manganese on the left can be on top and there of course, the interactions might become different, but in this arrangement this is an, it's a simple example on a linear chain you can see that the antiferromagnetic state is uh, favored over the ferromagnetic state simply by gaining kinetic energy, uh, it can lower its energy. <coughs> so, these are uh, example of uh, different kinds of exchanges, we will come to indirect exchange uh, and just discuss one or two more examples in the next class and then carry on uh, working with this Heisenberg model and its different versions. 
different incarnations and in different situations.